Leatherface, probably one of the most iconic characters in the entirety of Dead by Daylight, and out of all the licenses in the game, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was the one that inspired the game the most, since the whole idea of hooking survivors came straight out of the movies. A lot of people associate Leatherface with camping or playing in the scummiest way possible. I associate Leatherface with one of the most interesting development stories in the history of Dead by Daylight DLCs. The Leatherface DLC was extremely rushed, which led to the entire chapter feeling incomplete. This was the first content update that released without a survivor, the map was just repurposed in finished assets, the way he was revealed was very underwhelming and out of nowhere, and finally, the killer itself felt like an incomplete, limited version of Hillbilly. Let's talk about how the Leatherface was rushed into an unfinished DLC. The story of the Leatherface DLC actually started way earlier before we even knew what was happening behind the scenes. This was back in August 2017. The only licensed characters by this point was the Halloween DLC and Bill from Left 4 Dead. It was a wild time where nobody knew who was going to be the next killer or if we ever would get any other licensed characters again. Unlike now, where we can predict when the next chapters are going to release, back then nobody had any idea and the chapter releases were unpredictable. After the release of the free update including the Huntress, the Dead by Daylight community was left in radio silence for any future content. Suddenly, a mysterious post appeared on the Dead by Daylight subreddit with a set of mysterious leaks that came out of nowhere. A survivor by the name of Kate Denson was leaked with her voice lines which during that time were just grunts of pain, but we didn't know how she looked like or when she was going to be included in the game. The only thing we knew is that she was going to belong to chapter 6, or in other words, what ended up becoming the Leatherface DLC. But besides those mysterious leaks, nothing was known about the main part of every DLC, the killer itself, the map, or any of the perks. Again, there was no information or any other leaks during this time, and all of that changed on September 8th during the official Behavior development stream number 68. For the first time ever, Behavior officially broke their radio silence and confirmed that a new killer was coming to Dead by Daylight. What we are going to talk about today is the fact that there is a new killer coming. We haven't said that. There's a new killer coming. However, they didn't mention who they were, what map was going to be included, what survivor, and neither if it's licensed or not. The only thing we got was a new perk. That new perk is called something that I cannot pronounce because uh, because it's, it's gonna be a, it's I've been told I can't say the name. However, we can. The description is as follow: Your vicious attacks make the survivors drop their item on impact. The lost item is damaged in the fall, losing no zero or twenty five percent of its base amount of charges. So yeah. That's gonna be so much fun. Now with the power of retrospective, we know the reason why they couldn't say in the name of the perk. That's because this perk is what ended up becoming Franklin's demise, and any fan of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films would immediately know that this perk belongs to Leatherface. Now, an additional perk of this mysterious killer was also revealed later, and that perk ended up being Knockout. But again, besides those two perks, we didn't know anything about this killer at all, nor when they were supposed to be released. On September 12th, however, we got an official Dead by Daylight video called What Mask Are You? Nowadays, this was clearly a teaser for the new killer. But remember, back in time, we had absolutely no idea that Leatherface was coming to Dead by Daylight. It was impossible. Why would they add Leatherface if we already have Hillbilly, who is exactly the same? What you just heard was one of the most popular arguments against Leatherface in Dead by Daylight. A lot of people truly didn't think that he was ever going to be added in Dead by Daylight as there would be two redneck chainsaw wielding killers in the game. So during this time, and you can even see the comments yourself to this day, 
nobody expected this to be Leatherface. In fact, people thought that this was just an update to their merchandise store in order to add more viable masks to cosplay the Trapper, the Huntress or the Nurse. On September 14th, out of nowhere, Behavior released the Leatherface DLC, immediately available to purchase in the Steam store. Everyone was surprised that out of nowhere, an icon of horror movies was introduced as the next killer in Dead by Daylight. Fun fact, originally there was no crossplay between consoles and PC, and DLCs were not released simultaneously. This meant that only PC players could play as Leatherface during a time period and he was later added to purchase on Xbox and PlayStation. The trailer that was released with the console versions, unlike the one we got on PC, featured an entirely new cinematic with Leatherface in a cornfield, which is already a hint that the trailer was not ready yet by the time the DLC was live. Now remember the timeline of all of this. September 8th. Behavior confirms a new killer is coming. September 14th, six days later, a licensed killer came out of nowhere. So we went from knowing absolutely nothing to being able to play this new killer. That sounds really cool. But that excitement slowly started to dwindle. First of all, survivors got absolutely nothing in this DLC for the first time in a major update, as there was no new survivor to play as. A lot of players were very disappointed that Leatherface didn't come with a new realm with the Sawyer House, and instead it came with the Grim Pantry, a map that belonged to the Hag and from a realm that a lot of players didn't like that much. Not only was he literally reusing Hillbilly's add-ons, and to this day the only character to reuse add-ons from another killer, but his power was very, very disappointing. Leatherface had a very clunky power which didn't reward using it at all except in some very specific situations. His playstyle was very simple, go as close as possible to a survivor and start revving. In other words, the exact same playstyle that most Hillbilly players were already doing during this time. If you watched my Hillbilly documentary as well, you would also know that Hillbilly was a top tier killer during this time he was almost on the same level as the nurse, so what was the point of playing Leatherface over Hillbilly? He offered the exact same gameplay, but he missed the most crucial part and the main reason Hillbilly was so strong, mobility. Not only that, if you played Leatherface back in the days, you would also remember how you had to charge your chainsaw to the max or else it ended up being cancelled. This is because you couldn't feather the chainsaw like the hillbilly unless you charge it to the max, so this ended up with a lot of people cancelling the chainsaws by accident. His add-ons were completely useless and absolutely rushed, with the only truly unique add-on for him being the chilies and Bismarcks, and people said that the chilies didn't even work as intended. So what was the point of Leatherface? Camping. Booba was by far the best camper in the game during this time. It was outright impossible to save a survivor if a later phase was camping. And if you hooked survivors in the basement, well that survivor was dead. It will take behavior 5 years in order to add reassurance. And this is exactly how Leatherface became the best camper in the game by far. I mean, even the Steam store features an official image of Leatherface slugging a survivor in the shack. Leatherface was way too punishing to play normally, and he was completely overshadowed by Hillbilly. So, players decided to equip Insidious, Monster Shrine, Agitation and Ivan Grass down a survivor and just bring them to the basement. Players were still new and inexperienced at these tactics, so a lot of people fell for this. In fact, to this day, basement camping Boba is still something very popular. Leatherface felt pathetic to play. His map didn't even belong to him. And funniest thing of all, four days later after the release of Leatherface, an entirely new chapter was leaked according to a reddit post, which showcased some pack strings belonging to upcoming DLCs. These strings were also related to Kate Denson, the unreleased survivor, and the Sandman, the killer that ended up becoming Freddy Krueger. In fact, on October 7th, Freddy Krueger's voice lines and song was data mined from the game files and he was finally released on October 25th. Two entirely different killers, 
both of them icons of classic horror, were released back to back in a period of almost less than a month. But considering the fact that Freddy at least also introduced a new survivor and a new map, it was clear that Leatherface was given the short stick. What happened to Leatherface for him to literally reuse the exact same add-ons as Hillbilly? Why didn't they make a new realm for him? Most importantly of all, what happened to Kate Denson, the survivor that was supposed to be introduced with Leatherface? The answer is pretty clear. The DLC was rushed. According to a senior 3D environment artist, Pascal Kintin, the same artist that made the original realms of Dead by Daylight, said on his own art station that the Batham map was rushed in order to meet some strict deadlines, which could also explain why this map is completely unbalanced as it's literally confirmed to be a rushed map. That reveals that the Freddy DLC had a strict deadline to meet, which could explain why they had to completely rush the Leatherface DLC as they did not have time to work on two complete chapters at once. And this explains a lot, as there is also absolutely no reason to release two DLCs back to back so fast, especially two licensed DLCs that would require hard deadlines. Did you know that the Green Pantry, the map that came with Leatherface, was originally going to be a map introduced in the base game along with the Wraith, this was all changed and the Wraith was relegated to Auto Haven. And Behavior left the Unused maps in the files for months. Dream Pantry, originally called Dead Lake, was already basically completed and all they had to do was give it the finishing touches. So from the start this map was not supposed to belong to Leatherface. In fact, even his spotlight trailer showcases him in the Coldwind Farms, not in the Green Pantry, the map that was supposed to belong to him. But the truly mysterious thing in this entire DLC rush is Kate Denson. Kate Denson did not exist in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films. In fact, if someone were to be added as a survivor with Leatherface, that would have been Sally Hardesty, which could also be potentially referenced in Kate's Christmas sweater as it's called Sally Mustang, which is a blue song. And the sad thing is, there is absolutely no information about the original design of Kate. We don't know if the Kate that was repurposed and we ended up getting with the clown is the same design that was going to be released with Leatherface, but why would Behavior release a licensed killer with an all original licensed survivor? Now, this is not something out of the ordinary, as the ghost face we have in the game is an original character made by Behavior, and Yoichi Asakawa's adult version never existed in the Ringu films, so the Yoichi we have in game is original to Dead by Daylight as well. The possibility of Behavior making an original licensed character for Leatherface is not something out of the ordinary, as the license holders were kind enough to give him the ability to wear the faces of the survivors, something that was later removed due to controversy. In fact, in the new Chainsaw Massacre games, they are making entirely new characters for the IP as well. However, this is pure speculation, and the original Kate Denson who had completely different voice to the live version of Kate is a mystery completely lost to time. But to be fair, I call this a blessing. I am glad that the Kate we ended up getting is an original character made by Behavior, because that lets Behavior have total liberty over the character. Imagine if she ended up being a licensed character, just like Yoichi, who has almost no cosmetics at all despite being technically an original character made by Behavior. The only important thing we truly lost is the lore of the original Kate Denson, because it would have been different than the lore we have nowadays. And this is not confirmed anywhere, but I think that Kate by default fits the Leatherface DLC perfectly. In fact, out of all the characters in the game, she looks the most inspired in the characters of that film, so it's not out of the realm for her to actually have the same physical design as what we ended up getting with the clown. So to sum up what happened is very simple, back before the release of the game, we already knew that Behavior was interested into bringing as many licenses as possible. Luckily, they ended up both getting the license for Leatherface as well as the license for Freddy Krueger. However, they found a problem. Both of those licenses were going to be released very close to each other and considering the fact that Behavior still had the power of an indie company during those times, they had to make a hard choice. 
which chapter would beget the most resources in development? The answer was A Nightmare on Elm Street, as it was the most popular out of the two. So they copy and pasted Hillbilly's power with a few tweaks, they finished a map that was unused but already in the files, and they decided to leave Kate for a future DLC instead of scrapping her completely. Interestingly enough, the next DLC after Freddy Krueger was the Saw chapter, released on late January. This was the first time ever and to this day, the last time where three licensed killers were released back to back, with the closest thing we had being Ghostface, Ash Williams and the Stranger Things DLC releasing in that same order sequence. In two years after release, Behavior already secured the license for Halloween, A Nightmare on Elm Street, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre and saw four of the biggest horror films in cinema. And to be fair, we have to give props to the amount of hard work they had to do in order to be developing potentially three licensed killers at the same time. Knowing how little time they had in order to finish both projects, it is impressive how Freddy Krueger had one of the most unique powers conceptually in the entire game, and also impressive how Leatherface had basically no bugs with his power. He was not broken by code, he was just very underwhelming when compared to Hillbilly. Just to give you an idea, The Night was released in a worse state than original Bubba in terms of glitches. Knowing the history of the game's development is something very interesting to me, because maybe in another universe where Behavior had more time, Leatherface could have had an entirely different power to what we ended up getting. Maybe we could have had a unique map for him to reference his own movies. Maybe we could have seen this original prototype of Kate Denson, and maybe that would have included completely different survivor perks than what we ended up getting. But on my channel, we only talk about facts backed up by evidence, and sadly, the original intentions of behavior with the Leatherface DLC is a mystery that is lost in time. Leatherface did not get any reworks until patch 4.1.0, three years after his release, where he finally got some unique add-ons, and curiously enough, he got to keep some of the original hillbilly add-ons like the turning carburetor guide or the primer bulb during all those three years before his rework, however, Leatherface had absolutely no reason to not camp. So is the reason why Leatherface players camp due to the fact that he was rushed with an underwhelming power? I will let you decide. However, if you enjoyed this video and you want to know more about the patch 4.1.0, I highly recommend this video talking about Hillbilly, the other chainsaw wielding redneck and his development history. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.